Welcome to Explore Savannah. I'm your host, Darren Farr, and today we're at the Ogeechee Canal Museum and Nature Center. I'm here to talk with beekeeper Rob Potts and a historian named Mary Purcell. Chartered in 1824, the Savannah Ogeechee Canal was constructed between 1826 and 1830. A boom to Georgia's economy, the canal transported crops and goods from local plantations along the Ogeechee River to the busy shipping port of Savannah. Replaced by a railroad, the canal closed in the early 1890s. Today, more than 100 years after the canal ended commercial operations, the Savannah Ogeechee Canal Museum and Nature Center is working to turn the canal into a 16 mile long multi-purpose linear park. The museum and nature center are located at 681 Fort Argyle Road near the 204 and I-95 interchange. Hi. Hey. I'm Darren Farr. It's nice hey. to meet you. My name is Rob the Bee Whisperer. Be Rob the Bee Whisperer. I see you actually have bees over here. Tell me about them bees, Rob. Well, this is the queen. You see a yellow spot on top of her. She lays as much as 21 to 2,500 eggs a day. Well, she's busy. She's very busy young <laughs> lady. When she first becomes a queen, she will fly out. After she's out, she'll be going five five days at the most, she'll meet up with maybe 15 boyfriends. Wow. Then she will come back. And one week after that, after her body goes through its changes, she will go in to lay in eggs. And that's when she goes in here. All of these bees you see right here now are newborn bees. They go around and they clean all of the cells so she can go lay an egg in them. If they don't clean the cell, she will not lay an egg in it. Now, how far out if she's traveling for this five-day period? Does she mile, two miles? Could it be? As much as three miles. Okay. And then the worst control we have is mosquito control. Right. Is if during the day she goes out, they spray, and she don't get back, she don't make it back. Once a year, sometimes twice a year, they swarm on account of overpopulation in the hive. Your hive may switch from 60,000 to 100,000 and they cannot get in. Wow. So then the queen, will they'll create a new queen cell when it's 10th day, they'll cap it after all of the royal jellies put in it. The old queen, 50% of the bees will leave and find a new home. And, that, and they'll start a new colony. And that's how, you know, that's how the colonies of bees do. And these are all pharaoh bees. I don't have nothing but pharaoh bees, wild bees that I've gone and caught. Okay. All of the ones that you see cleaning it is brand new born bees. Okay. After the first week, then they'll start flying and connect to, up and bring in pollen and nectar to make honey and that, and then, to make you know their food through the winter. If you don't slap at them or anything like that when they get around you, they won't bother you. Yeah. And uh, you know I can go out there and there'll be a hundred on my sleeves and they don't sting me or bother me. Well, but, now you're the bee whisperer though. Yeah, so I am the bee whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be at alive out there yeah, if I went out there. Yeah, I swear yeah, I would. I am the bee. No, if you would listen to what I had told you, mm -hmm. and that they wouldn't bother you that yeah. much. So now, when, do you actually collect honey in this process? I do, you do? I okay. do, and uh, I do, I collect it. I entered it in a Georgia State Bee Contest and won first place. I couldn't believe it. Now, do they judge off the taste or does it? Does Strictly it... taste. Okay. We, we put the honey in a black jar. They cannot see what color it is or anything like that. They take the lid off, they take a grass glass rod and they put it down in and they taste it. Then after they taste that, they write down everything they think. They put that glass rod aside and they rinse their mouth out and they go to the next one. That's like and fine wine almost. Exactly, yeah. just Definitely. about like fine wine. They found honey that was in Egyptian tombs that was 2,000 years old. My goodness. That was just like the day they put it in there. If honey, raw honey crystallizes, people throw it away, they say, oh, it's spoiled, it got hard. 
you boil a pan of water, you put the jar in there and leave it be, it will go right back liquid like it was supposed to be. Now that's good but, to know because yep. I have thrown away a jar because it crystallized. Don't never now throw I feel away. terrible. Yeah. So. Honey never spoils. It never spoils. Oh. And I go to Oakland Island Wildlife Refuge. They have bees over there. I tend to the bee yard. I'm over the bee yard. All of the honey that we create in Oakland, we bottle it and sell it in the gift shop so Smart. they can feed the animals, buy food for the animals. Well, I don't want to go, but I do want to thank you. But I enjoyed meeting you. Enjoyed meeting you, Mr. Bob. And maybe we will see each other again, I hope. I'll and be that, right over. There you go. Thank you so Anytime much. What great stories. I enjoy, I enjoy you talking to me, and I get carried away. A big part of this facility is the History Museum. Canal history is an important part of the American story, and so is the heritage of the people who lived on the banks of these historic canals. Maybe even more so when the canal was in a swamp. We are here today at the Ogeechee Canal Museum. I'm talking with the beautiful and talented <laughs> Miss Mary Purcell. Miss Purcell, what is it that you are involved in here? Well, I am also a member of the um, Savannah Geechee Canal Society in which we are trying to maintain what was originally here historically. And so we are trying very hard to keep it where other people can come later, even our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren can come and see what it was like because I grew up here in the swamp. Uh, some years ago, I sent out a letter to everybody that I could, put it in the newspaper. If you were living in Black Ankle Swamp, would you please write me and tell me about your experiences because I wanted to do a history of the swamp. There were three people who responded and that is scary to think that there were just three people left that really wanted to even remember the swamp and I was one of the three that wanted to remember it. The thing I love the most is to write about the swamp. And this swamp has been, a, it's, it's your heart song. It is. It's a postcard from the heart. It is. It's so. a postcard from my heart because this is where I got the learning that I needed mm -hmm. to know that, okay, you started here, that doesn't mean the way you end. For example, right down there, you see those cattails that are up there? Mm -hmm. I now know 100% you can eat everything on a cattail. Wow. There's protein all the way down. I mean, there's just something everywhere in this swamp. They're healing things in the swamp, and I have been the recipient of it. My daddy was the fire talker, and in case you do not have a history of that, he could, if you got burned, and it was a slight burn, he could just rub his hand over, not touching the fire, and he could say something. I do not know exactly. I think I know now, but I didn't then. And he would take the fire out, and he'd throw it away. And he'd take the fire out, and he'd throw it away. But it would not even, it wouldn't blister. I have actually seen him talk the fire out of very bad burns. And what he would do was, and a lot of people don't know this, you would wet a collard leaf. You'd put that collard leaf over the bad burn and you don't take it off. It'll actually dry because what is happening is that the skin tissue is open. And so when you put the collard leaf on it, it protects it. When it is healed, the collard leaf will just flake off. So you don't have to worry about pulling it off or anything like that. It's just normal. Well, that is some <laughs> swamp talk. That, about is that. Swamp. that is deep in the heart of Georgia. You better believe it. Mercy. And we had people who could do just about anything. I mean, it was um, an unbelievable life. We did not use money. Um, that's something that most people don't understand. We bartered. If you needed something, my daddy was a custom, um, he could build anything from rocking chairs to china cabinets, I mean, anything. He would build it. When you killed your hog, then you brought my daddy pork or sausage. And I will share something with you. Every Christmas here in the swamp, we raised watermelons too. We loved watermelons. I still am a fiend for watermelons. Daddy would, at the end of the watermelon season, look for that watermelon vine, and he'd do several of them, that um, he could take the whole vine and dig it up. He would wrap it around the watermelon. He would go out to beside the smokehouse and he had a wooden barrel. 
and it had cotton seeds in it because we would card cotton. Back then we would make the squares that went into the quilts. Right. We'd card the cotton, we'd put the seeds over in the barrel, and of course we used the cotton to, to um, enforce the heating capacity for the quilt. But he would take that watermelon and he would push it down in those seeds every Christmas. His gift to us was he would throw the watermelon over in the creek and get it cold. And we had cold, icy cold watermelon mm. for Christmas dinner. And that was our Christmas treat. I wish I knew what kind of wood was used. It did not occur to me to even ask daddy until it was too late. But it was a wooden barrel, that's all I know. And he had the cotton seeds in there. So somewhere it sort of like put the the watermelon in suspended animation or something, and it just stayed there and ready. And he just had to, had two or three or four in there, and we until we ran out of them, we ate them, you know? And it's unbelievable. But Miss Purcell, I think that's your gift, and that's why you're here. I think that's that's the stories of the swamp right. and the, the what the Ogeechee Center is doing here is preserving it. Preserving that. it, yes. And those stories are so important, so important. They it's, really are. Yeah, that, that's they're a, important to me, but they should be important to all of Savannah and the surrounding areas it's the because fabric. it's their history. It it's is. what holds this whole country together. Well, you mentioned yeah. the quilt, that's and making right. that quilt. Right. It's, a part, it's a patch of that quilt. Right. See, we had a lot of things going on in the swamp. We had people who could tell the future, mm -hmm. just like you, you. You don't sometimes. Sometimes you don't want to believe it. Right. But absolutely, when you see it coming true. You know, okay, they really knew what they were talking about. There are some tales that say that during the Civil War that there were, um, there were Confederate soldiers hidden out all around Savannah and that some lady, I'll leave it at that, some lady tied the rice barges together and while they were celebrating, they were cele Sherman was celebrating the conquering of Savannah, the rice barges were moving down the river, down the canal, down to the river, and in the dark went around over by Jackson, Fort Jackson, and all of that right now. And what they did was they tied those barges together, and they threw dirt on top of the barges and hay on top of the dirt, and then they, the Confederate soldiers marched across in the Carolina to escape being killed in Savannah. Wow. Oh, and that's a story. That's There's a, a river story, story for that's you. That's a story. I don't know whether it's true or not. I mean, you know, it's, there are stories all over, some true, some not, but that's one of them that I think probably is pretty close to I being true. I think the legends and the that is as much a part of the fabric as, as the oh, truth. Yes. Oh, yes. I want to hear both, and yeah. I think that's right. that makes it. I mean, there's so many historical things that happen in Savannah. You can't speak without speaking history, and that's, I love that. That, to me, it. is so important. Savannah, it was, was and is a wonderful place to grow up in. And I just had a great time here um, growing up in Savannah and in the swamp. Well, I hope you had fun exploring Savannah with us today on Explore Savannah. Now, you can find out more information at locallivingsavannah.com or check out YouTube so you can see more of beautiful, historic Savannah, Georgia.